James Acaster on Fubar Radio. My guest today is Squeebus Pip. You alright, mate? Hello, how are you? <laughs> Good, thanks. Thanks for coming. Thank you for inviting me on this lovely s- s- sunny day. It is very sunny, isn't it? But actually not as hot in here as I thought it would be. I was quite worried we are going to be... No, it's alright. It's pleasingly cool. <laughs> it's pleasing. Very pleasing. I, um, I was saying to you, you are... So you're not only... You're the first guest who is on my iPod. Excellent. We have not had a guest who's actually on my That's iPod exciting. before. exciting. I'm honoured. Yeah, and you are the most played person on this show anyway. Amazing. The shuffle favours you. I was going to say, did you lot. accidentally have... Sh- Shuffle album on by accident. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So purely yeah. by chance. Yeah, it, yeah. Songs so the exact same thing. Just had, uh, played your the entire album all the way through. See, I don't even remember downloading this, but it's <laughs> coming up. It's coming up a lot. <laughs> Whoever this familiar. guy is, let's, let's book him for the show. Why not? <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Well, thank you for having me on. Yeah. Well, some guests of uh, Angela Barnes. Uh, you saved her from uh, what what was at, uh, at one point a very embarrassing streak. She oh, was really? uh, she was not happy with what was coming up. <laughs> And then Angles came on, and she uh, she was she she celebrated so in the chair you're sitting in now, yeah. just proper fist pumped in the well, air. I'm very really happy, p- p- pleased with that. I wondered where it was going. Of uh, uh, saved her from an embarrassing streak. I was literally <laughs> thinking a streak. I was like, I don't even remember this. I don't, yeah, I don't remember this happening. But yeah, was it your more yeah your, your more crazy days? Uh, <laughs> <Yeah. don't know. laughs> That's how, wonderful though. How are you feeling about your? Uh, are you feeling confident? Or? Um, I'm feeling comfortable, not confident, but comfortable yeah. because I've always. I had a thing. Me and my mate Stu Tell for years had always said I I hated it when the term guilty pleasures started to become a regular thing in our lexicon because yes. if you like it, you're like we don't need any guilt involved yeah. here. It's, yeah. it's all right. It's good. It's good. So yeah. it's kind of yeah. But I, I also I'm always a massive fan of when you realise um, that there's a lot of music that you'll love that your fan base will absolutely hate. Yeah, yeah, And again, yeah, yeah. I, I'm okay with that, but yeah. often the fan base aren't. I'll post a song, I'm like, oh, I love this song so much, and they'll be like, <laughs> because it's it's nothing like <laughs> me, and they'll assume that I only listen yeah. to stuff that's like, no, I don't... Yeah, well, we've had, like, hardly any musicians like on this show yeah. yet, which is, seems crazy, but yeah. like, I, just, I just don't know many. And uh, so to actually see what a, a musician listens to yeah. is going to be quite, quite fun as well. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I mean, the reality is I listen to mainly podcasts at the moment because right. I'm just <laughs> in that zone, but yeah. That's great. It's, if they come up, that'll yeah, fill a lot exactly. of time. <laughs> that'll just kill... That's, that's the rest of the show, so, yeah, have so we play one. that out. Well, cheers, mate. It's your own podcast, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, you can move on. Um, then, yeah, that's what I'm concerned about, actually, if any of my own songs come up on right. my iPod yes because there's some I often delete but we did a gig years ago yeah. where I was doing two I'd done my solo stuff and then I was doing a gig a solo gig with my band and then the first gig in ages with Dan Lassac on another mm. stage afterwards and I'd got quite drunk during my solo gig right. and me and Dan were doing a show and I forgot the words to one of the songs and yeah. that's never happened before and, and literally I made a joke of it we started again yeah couldn't couldn't get it so on the journey to our next gig the next day i listened to all our albums on repeat just to go right i need to right i've yeah. got too comfortable here i've yeah, got too yeah. comfortable in what i do and not, do, not have, you, have you done practicing. many gigs uh drunk i've done three I, I i used to always drink you see it was it was kind of at edinburgh a fringe i i stopped drinking at shows because i used to always drink a bottle of rose on stage right because okay. Beer or cider makes me burpee. And yeah. If you're doing a <laughs> dramatic poem about suicide, you don't yeah, really yeah. want to b- burp in the middle. So <laughs> I started to drink wine, but then they're also quite energetic gigs, and I'd realise I'm drinking it. And because of the adrenaline, <laughs> yeah, I'm not yeah. getting that drunk. Yeah, but I realise yeah. I've just done 20 sh- shows this month, which means I've drunk around between f- f- 15 and 20 b- yeah. b- b- bottles of wine because most <laughs> nights I'd get through the whole thing. But yeah, yeah. So at the fringe, like when I knew I was doing nineteen <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sh- shows in a row, I thought, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I need to go to water. I can't drink a bottle of wine every day for nineteen yeah. days. And well, you say yeah. that, but a lot, a lot of my comedian friends are <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot will be fine with that. They'll yeah, say it's yeah. essential, but so that's breakfast. Yeah, I've kind of yeah, I've eased up. And again, I, it was weird. I've, I realised that I used to drink early on because I was nervous, and yeah. now I've been doing it a long time. I don't need that. So it's so kind yeah. of being. F- f- forced to do gigs sober for a bit yeah i was like oh actually i'm probably doing a better job here because yeah. i'm not stumbling about yeah, that so first much. sober gig did it feel really good coming off stage and going oh you know that was it really did because actually i did i said the spoken word ones i was like yeah but it's spoken word is different i'll still need it for the energy of a proper yeah. live show with music and then mine and dan's n- are next to i just got over tonsillitis like right. days before the tour started so i had to drink water and again it was another one where the first one i was like that felt like one of the best performances yeah. I've done. And again, it could be an amalgamation of I'd, I'd 
gone off. I think Edinburgh and places like that are amazing for honing your actual general skills on stage. So yeah. it could be that I developed in different ways, but yeah, I kind of put a bit of it down to the fact that I wasn't horrendously drunk. Yeah. So yeah. that kind of, yeah, it felt good. It's good, those milestones, isn't it? We, we can look back and say, I've got better. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> completely. It barely happens, D- but like... DJing, I'm way better drunk. Every time yeah. I've DJed sober, oh... Not, yeah, not not good. Drunk seems to give me, the, the, but there's a point. Obviously, yeah, it's, yeah. it's finding that sweet spot. I, uh, I I've, I've had very few. the reason why this show's on shuffle pretty much is because when I am left in charge, uh, <laughs> I I don't I don't really please. But I, I, I did a DJ set once in Kettering where I'm from, yeah. and it ended with. Uh, about five guys chanting wanker at me. Brilliant. A full of Brilliant. Bar, and me being terrified. So uh, I've never never really been very good at DJing. I, y- 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 like when I started off DJing years ago, I used to play punk songs at like a goth and metal kind of biker night. Yeah. And I got away with that for a bit. And then I started to try and st- sneak some hip hop in there. And I right. played a street song because me and a few yeah. of my mates were going to s- uh, uh, see the streets that night. And one of the bikers who had shares in the club or something came up and told the guy who'd booked me to let me know um, if I don't stop playing this N-word music, right. they're going to kill me, essentially. Amazing. So I went from white London-based Mike Skinner <laughs> yeah. to a bit of KRS-One, a bit of Public Enemy, because I was like, right, I'm just going to go out on a stretcher if I need to. I was only going to play one rap song. If yeah. you're going to be hugely racist, I was yeah. like, right, I'd rather make a stand here and get yeah. my head kicked in but I managed to sneak out I was never invited back obviously yeah, that, was a, did. that gig didn't continue but yeah it was worth it oh good on you yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, I remember play, first in play the guy was telling me to play Oasis yeah and I didn't I, but I, I simply couldn't I didn't have any yeah that yeah, was the thing yeah. is that they were requesting things that I didn't have yeah so like I couldn't I couldn't do it and I was only I think I was DJing for an hour and then the proper DJ was going to come back on so I was like mate I'm just doing a guest slot it's you know it's eight o'clock till nine. Yeah. It's not. This isn't your whole night. And he was like, and he kept him going back and forth. And eventually, I remember looking at him in the eye where he told me the next song better be Oasis. And I was, and the band was sick. Who are like yeah. a yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> horrible math metal, math metal band. And uh, he was so angry. Oh, <laughs> I remember man. hearing it come on. I love, it. No I love the, the illusion that they think you've got exactly what they want you in your it. collection. I, I had my club night. I, I do a club night called We Are Lizards. Quick plug mm. there at the book club every month. Um, and as the guy who was closing on Saturday, is amazing DJ called Push Music. He was playing this. It'd gone quite electro-y and dancey. Mm. And someone with literally 10 minutes left of the whole club night, yeah. he's got everyone into this euphoria. This guy came and went, can you play... Um, a, a Taylor Swift shake it off <laughs> and I love that song yeah, I think yeah. it's a great it's song, a really but, song but I kind of in my own drunk way was trying to explain to him could how how in in, in 10 minutes how would he get from what he's playing now to that yeah. like without just going stop yeah. <laughs> yeah, going, yeah. sorry guys we're now going to end on it was like <laughs> he, he kind of he mixes together and trans- I was like I don't know I don't know how yeah. you'd get to that for th- I, yeah. if, if you had an hour then yeah. maybe it's, maybe it's, it's, but it's like you know going to a mum who's watching Octonauts with her child yeah. and going do you want to put brass eye on next <laughs> yeah yeah can <laughs> you just pop that on quickly put that on I like that one <laughs> it's brilliant <laughs> I love it you're listening to the best of my name's James A. Castor. Welcome to my new Foo Bar show. My guest today, Lemba Opek. How that, are you, mate? You all right? Very, very well. Delighted to be here. Love the new format and concerned and excited to see what comes out of my mystery machine. Yes, now you, you've got it all set up. I'm going to unplug my iPod and hand the lead over to you right now. It's very exciting. The um, lead has passed to a new generation of it, iPod. Do you think you've got quite a cool, a cool iTunes? Uh, I have... I think so, actually, because lots of my stuff's really obscure, mm. and I always think obscure is interesting. I don't tend to save very much mainstream or modern stuff, because you can get that anywhere all the time. Yeah. So it's stuff that I listen to when I'm writing. I do tons and tons of writing, and yeah. uh, that's when I use it. Though, funny enough, I've got iPod problems today, as you can see, and yeah. sometimes I use other things as well. Uh, I've got a Dell with trans music on it, too, and it's always on shuffle. Because what is life? What is life without adventure? As you've shown by increasing your stature no end, Absolutely. with Muppet lovers Absolutely. all over the world. Absolutely. Well, let me, let's let's throw to yours right now. Let's uh, okay. press shuffle and see what what tunes inspire Lemix Opec's brilliant writing. Here, Here we, we go. go. Oh. Fubar Radio. Oh, Natalie and Brulia. First mm. song on the, now. Lembert, um, I can't feel like I can convey uh, to the listeners your joy when that came on. 
punch in the air and shouting, yes, such a cool song. Well, I realise this is not a competition, it's a war. You had the Muppets, I had big mistake. How cool is that? And, uh, and, and I can assure you at home, that was entirely a random selection. Uh, I don't think anyone's doubting that for That's a second. Amazing, Definitely yeah. was a... What a great that, song. Really. What a great oh, I haven't song. heard it in a while. And I haven't listened to it for ages. I do sort of listen to stuff randomly myself because mm. yeah, it's more interesting. You know, I regulate everything. Uh, the free, <laughs> free, free creative thought. But yes, OK, I would say that uh, Muppets is good. But this time, Imbruglia. I just get it by a whisker. Did you, did you like Torn by Natalie Imbruglia? Do you I, remember that song? I do. Totally iconic, classic song, actually. Amazing um, song. And uh, she deserves everything, all the happy success that she's had. <laughs> I was going to say she deserved everything she's got. That sounds terrible. She deserves everything in the world, that woman. Yes, yeah, Natalie Imbruglia. To me. Well, not everything in the world. I mean, I'm no. not quite that generous. But uh, certainly, oh. uh, well, I don't know. Sorry, this no. is going in a dangerous direction now. <laughs> she might be waiting. She might have heard this show. she would be outside waiting for you. And Natalie, I'll be finished at six. There you go. Yeah. And you decide uh, if you want a Muppet lover or, indeed, somebody who loves you, baby. <laughs> oh, uh, I wasn't throwing my hat in the ring for that. I don't but, know. Uh, there you go. Well, you have now. You yeah, know. I'll, I'll have Miss Piggy waiting for me. <laughs> so see. Um, we'll see I, I think we should have another one from your, Already? Uh, your okay. one. Yeah, I think, you know, follow up. You keep the momentum. You're on, you're on a roll. <laughs> you're on a roll. You've got... You got Natalie Imbruglia kicked it off very nicely. What are you hoping for in your heart now? I'm actually hoping, f- I'm hoping for All Saints. Actually, yeah, they're buried in there somewhere. I haven't listened to that for a long time either. But uh, it could be anything from hundreds. Also, I, I should warn you uh, that uh, I've got some tracks there which aren't really tracks at all. The computer thinks they're tracks, but they're recordings from a radio show that I did many years ago and didn't actually work out, but they right. just, somehow got absorbed in the collection. I normally just go past them. So there's them. some of you talking to other people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll see, see who comes up. <laughs> you never know. You if might that even happens, know something. I'm not... I'm not going to skip it. We're going to play that whole interview that you've done with someone else. Uh, unless it's the 30-minute version. It's a 30-minute version. Yeah, but it could be the most easiest, easiest show I've ever done if we do that. Well, we can go to the pub with Miss Piggy and Natalie then. Yeah, me and you, we'll come back when that's finished. <laughs> well, let's see. Let's okay. see what let me open next track right, is. Let's see, what, let's see what comes up. Tension in the air. Right, the shuffle is happening. Let's see what happens. OK. Kelly Watch the Stars by Air, which... I think it's cooler than Natalie Imbruglia. Lembit wasn't convinced, but then about halfway through you went, this is cool. I decided I was suddenly becoming super cool. Um, yeah. With my Aston Martin parked outside, if only that was the case. <laughs> I've been lucky. I've been lucky, James. I mean, it's been, it's been good. I mean, also, though, I have Kelly Watch the Stars on my iPod, so if, if it, it, it could, could come, come up, up it twice. It could come up. This is actually a bit, maybe not from the same album. Both this and the previous song came out from, I think, different discs of the... Brit 1999 Awards album. I've been very lucky when I was an MP. I used to hang around quite a lot with uh, people from the music industry. And then I was lucky enough to go to some of these awards and they'd give these out in the freebies afterwards. So Ah, I think I didn't even pay for that album. Oh, man, you're looking cooler than me and you haven't even paid for it. Uh, I downloaded that Muppet song. (laughs) 79p. Did you really? Out of pocket. Well, I I bought the whole album. For the uh, the latest, or not the latest Muppets film, it's a Muppets film with uh, well, Jason Segel in it. That worries me because that means there's ten times more risk of having another Muppet song than I thought. Oh, there's so more than ten. <laughs> there's loads of Muppets. That, there's even like little snippets of Kermit just talking for five seconds and stuff like <laughs> that. Like just stuff from the film. They, they use it to link up tracks. So I've got that on here. This, Who knows? It's more like a counselling session now, James. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm, I'm really I'm, I'm depending on this next song. I, I want to I want to hear your next one, and we can compare it to what we've just heard. Well, let's see if it saves me. See what happens. <laughs> uh, okay, here we go. James A. Caster's iPod, track two. No. Three twenty by Cloud Dead on my iPod. I mean, let's face it, that kind of stuff doesn't get much radio play. These days, people don't really get to hear uh, some nice electronic dirge just played repeatedly. Uh, Lembit, reactions to that? Um, I'm just not depressed enough to enjoy it, James. <laughs> <laughs> really. I mean, if, if I want to be really depressed, I'll listen to Leonard Cohen. And that's, that's not fair, actually, James. I like that. Yeah. There's, a, there's a bar called Gilgamesh in Camden in London, and that's the kind of music you'd hear there. I really did Gilgamesh. like it. Yeah, yeah, I Gilgamesh. should head, to head down to Gilgamesh. Hang you would those be guys. a hero probably there because I would say that uh, they'll all know a Cloud Dead there <laughs> and 320. I think it's cool because it's alternative. It's not mainstream. Mm-hmm. And it says something about yourself, mainly positive. Where, where it's tripped me up, which is annoying, is that every other song on that album is quite melodic and fun and, and uh, rappy. <laughs> and then that one song is like that. 
and my iPod's gone, I heard you're doing your shuffle show today, here you go. <laughs> you're not getting any of the melody of Cloud Dead, just that. Have you seen a film called Her, H-E-R? Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Well, it reminds me of that because maybe in the film Her, if you haven't seen it, a computer, an operating system, an OS, and a human begin to develop a relationship. And yeah. she communicates in various ways. Maybe your OS is telling you something. What would it be to, 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 to end my life? I mean, that, it, was a, it was a depressing <laughs> bit of music. It, it wasn't that emo-ish. I no, no, right. it wasn't. We'll see, well, let's see what the next song is. My iPod again. I mean, here we go. Let's see. Breaking Ground by Branson. Um, that's cool. one that I, I think people can't really get me on because uh, it's pretty much no one's heard of them. It's cool. I thought that Upbeat. was cool. Yeah, that's good. I liked cool. it. There was a bit. There's a bit in there that was quite emotional. I felt quite emo-y. It was a little bit whiny, but well, maybe whiny, but energetically whiny instead of the "I give up" sort of three twenty <laughs> type sound. Yeah, <laughs> the, the cloud dead one. That we, we felt we felt quite sad. Yeah, it, we but, brought but, our mood down. That that pepped I, us up. Yeah, a bit. Pe- there's just a kind of like um, a caffeine. It's like it's like it's like Red Bull on on and on air really. Yeah, yeah. That's what reminds me of when I was I was seventeen. I started hanging out with uh, like people who were in their 20s and they were all listening to that album so I got, I got it just to kind of like I got it to kind of be cool and being with them it reminds me of the jungle actually I was in the jungle I'm a celebrity get me out of here with uh, none other than Sean Ryder from Happy Mondays yes. and oftentimes when I've been in Manchester Man- Manchester music scene uh, because I do actually work a little bit uh, with a record label called Defcon uh, Defcon 2 in uh, uh, the Midlands Lovely. That's often the support kind of, of band that we get. And there's a right. band we're working with called The Wolves. They're somewhere in my computer. Might come up. The Wolves are like that, but like turbocharged like that. You'll hear a lot about them in the next couple of months. The wall, People the are wolves. describing them as the next Branson. Uh, they will be saying that, and they'll say, we, we know that because we listen to James's show yeah. uh, on, on Food Bar Radio. <laughs> that is so. the only place you'll hear Branson <laughs> in this day and age. Let's <laughs> face it, no one else is playing Branson's breaking ground song from well, their they 1999 be, They should be paying you a royalty in that case. Yeah, I should be, I should be having them <laughs> phoning me immediately. Um, I don't think I'm quite out the woods yet. I don't think I'm quite got back. You're still on a winning streak in yeah. your, uh, as far as I've been say. twice lucky. You've been twice, twice lucky. lucky. How, how, how are you feeling now? You uh, feeling? More nervous. Uh, more nervous the, now? The higher they climb, the far, how, further they fall. I think that was a David Cassidy album. My yeah. sister had a Imagine if that's what comes up now. I haven't got it. It was if David Cassidy comes up immediately and you look like a wizard or a cheat. It will be my OS going mental and <laughs> unilaterally importing stuff from the ether. Um, I love also, how you saw her and you're kind of thinking that maybe that's going to be, that's going to turn out to be your life at some point. I would like it if it is. I haven't got many friends. <laughs> no, just be you and uh, Scarlett Johansson. That's right. In fact, uh, there's nobody else in the studio. If you're listening in, it's just like the computer keeps talking to me. Yeah, this is. I, I am an OS. I'm not a real. Uh, <laughs> Lemmy's completely rigged this shuffle as well. But uh, you don't look the way I imagine Scarlett Johansson looks. So no, well, you know, <laughs> tato potato. James Acaster on Fubar Radio. My name is James Acaster. This is my show. Uh, hey. Tell me if you recognise this voice. Good-ish news. Rick Edwards. Hello. Okay. How are you? Yeah, I'm all right. I'm sorry that I'm late and... Don't worry um, about it, mate. ...sweating. Um, but I like to play loads of my songs, though, and that's uh, that's my favourite thing to do. That's a boon for you, oh, isn't it? Oh, I love it. it. So actually, I've helped you out. Absolutely loved it. Um, do you want my iPhone? I would, actually. I would lo- Oh, do you know what's just happened? Like, the worst thing that could have happened. You've, um... It's probably not the worst thing that could have happened. What has happened? <laughs> the, uh, the cable for the that I plug it into just uh, I, I just let it go and it went down the hole. Oh, and it's now, okay. I can see it. Can you I see can it? See it? Yeah, it's yeah, on the yeah, floor. Probably the most shambolic episode we've ever done. Yeah, uh, a lady is feeding it through the hole. Amanda, she got a name, mate. Come on. <laughs> yeah, but I don't like to be too familiar with. That, <laughs> um, um, so shall I? I'll plug my guy in. Absolutely. How are you doing? First? Uh, yeah, I'm good. Thank you, mate. Feeling um, good? Yeah. Oh, I've just got my a pint of water. You feeling? As have you? Feeling pretty confident about your. Well, the thing is, um, I don't really know what is on what is on this uh, okay. machine. Um, do you not listen to it much? I I sort of I do, but I listen to the things that I've bought recently. So yes. I know what I've bought recently, but um, beyond that, um, it's a bit of a mystery. I've got. I don't know if I've got no. What's an average number of songs to have on one of these? Well, I thought you must see, have some experience. Well, here. yeah. What I, are you packing? See, I've got close to nine thousand, right? But uh, yeah, it okay. turns out most people I've had on have got like you know twenty thousand. They've got loads. Yeah, you see, I I don't really like music. Uh-huh. I've got uh, four thousand five hundred eighty-seven. Okay. So that that feels low. 
But still, we're not going to get through all of them. Well, how long am I show? here for? You are here for uh, yeah, yeah, a, about a year. Listen, we'll break the back of it at least. We'll yeah. get to 2,000 and then we'll, uh, we'll call it a night. <laughs> we'll, we'll call half time. Um, so do I, um, when, when do I, how does it work? Well, you know, normally I, I, I could have a little chat, get to know you. Yeah, sure, say sure, hi. sure. But, but you seem quite nervous about it. You, you, you want to go straight into this? No, I don't, I, I'm really, do I, I'm, fine. I'm very, I'm very easy. I mean, it's your show. <laughs> um, I will do what I'm told. Um, but I'm happy to, so basically I'm happy to either talk yeah. or talk about the music <laughs> or listen to the music. Love it. Pick, is, you just pick. This is normally the chat we'd have off air, Rick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's good to be very clear to the listeners really clear. Um, what's happening. It's exactly what's going to happen. Uh, you know, what I am prepared to do and what I'm not prepared to yeah. do. Yeah, but you, you are prepared to do all, all of them but not at once. Yeah, I don't want to do them all at once. You can't talk and... I can't talk and listen to music. And listen to the music, yeah. <laughs> yeah. When the music is yeah. on, I'm going to ask you to pipe down. Yeah. <laughs> just have enjoy the music. Shut my mouth. Yes, please. Yes, That's please. Are, are you, so you don't really... What would you say? Do you think you love films more than music or music more than films? Oh, so if I had to just um, enjoy one of those... For the rest of your life, rest you can't life, do the I'm other going one. film... Every time. Every time. Um, although obviously I'm, I'm slightly cheating because I'm getting a bit of soundtrack in there, aren't I? You do. What if I told you the soundtrack is all gone? So you just have to watch. So it's silent. So, what about know. the foley? What no. about the sound effects? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The sound effects. If they I, stay in there. Okay. Well, just yeah, no I'm music. still taking film. No I'm music. Still so taking so film. that ruins Tarantino films for you forever, probably. Um, I, yeah. I mean, I mean, they're very good. They are good. But imagine. I'm wondering how significant the music in something like Jaws is. <laughs> like, is it is it just a bit flat? Yeah, um, without that music, maybe. I bet it would be. I bet you just see the shark come along, and go. Oh, the shark. Or would it be more tense? Is this a good? I think this might be a good idea for a new show. We watch films together, yeah. where we've Take taken the... off the soundtrack and see if they're yeah. rubbish or not. I think that would be quite good. Yeah, and, uh, and perfect then, for the radio as well. <laughs> really perfect for the radio. It's me and you describing exactly <laughs> what the you know, it's a shark's yeah, thing the, now. This bit is a bit flat. As yeah, it's a bit yeah. flat, but. Uh, I don't know. So no, I'd take, uh, yeah, I would take films. And mm. I'd take films even if they were stripped of their soundtrack. What was the last film you watched and not even enjoyed? Just what, can you remember what Well, the last actually, one? yeah. I, the last film I watched was also a film I enjoyed. Magic Mike. Ah, oh, yes. Triple uh, XL. Yeah. It was magnificent. You loved it. Really, really enjoyed I mean, it. You wouldn't look out of place in that film, if, th you, if you don't mind me saying. No, I, I mean, I the opposite of mind. Yeah. <laughs> I actively encourage you to say that. Yeah. Um, it's uh, it's brilliant. Also, the the sort of audience that you get for a film like that, very enjoyable audience. Yes. Real, really amped up um, ladies who might not be on a Hindu, but might as well be on a Hindu. And then just you. Shouting, whooping. And then me, uh, my girlfriend and my mate. And at one point, this genuinely... So, this sounds like a joke, but genuinely happened. About 30 minutes in, a guy got up from his seat, like the only other guy in there, I think, got up from his seat, came over to us uh, and just whispered, is this Terminator? Um, <laughs> and we said, uh, no, mate. <laughs> and he walked out. Did he? But I love the idea that for 30 minutes he was watching it thinking... This is not. I mean, I know it's the. You know, I mean, it's I not a million new, miles away. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're, they're naked, but they haven't taken anyone's clothes and boots and motorbikes yeah. yet. <laughs> One of them could be a robot. Yeah, <laughs> from the future. But I, I, uh, I really enjoyed that film. I thought it was absolutely mm. ideal. I enjoyed the first one. Yes. Um, Channing Tatum, mm. lovely dancer. Really, he is. Uh, he is very, very good. And mm. you know what's nice is is occasionally just having a an actor who surprises everyone. Because, like, we all kind of maybe wrote him off early doors. Uh, what, thinking, when you, you're watching Step Up and thinking, I, I don't, think boy, can, yeah, don't yeah. care about this guy. Pretty boy, he can dance, but what yeah. else can he do? Mm. He does everything. He's funny. He is funny. Really funny. And uh, he's also very good serious. In Foxcatcher, he's a very good he's serious He's amazing actor. in Foxcatcher. Mm. Yeah, he's a, he's a good man. He's also got one of the thickest necks in the business. Really? Such a thick neck. You know, one of those necks neck, that is wider than the head. Yeah, yeah. How Almost he like he's that? had a, a different head fitted. Yeah. He used to have a massive head. <laughs> and now he's got a normal size head popped on. But some plastic the surgery is retained. It happens a lot in Hollywood, plastic yeah, surgery. Yeah, it does. You just, just you go in, you say, look, new head for me, I think. Oh, and do you want to do the neck as well? Because it makes sense. Nah. No, no. I haven't got the No, the I like the for neck. That. Yeah, yeah. I'll come, I'll come back. <laughs> yeah. If the next films do well, I'll get, I'll get a proportionate neck. For now, no one will notice. Mm. Um, right, well, let's, let's, ever let's... thought just uh, having, Ever thought yep. about having your head swapped? Me? Having my yeah. head swapped? Good question, actually. Uh, and if so, mm. obvious. Who would I have head? it swapped with? Who would I have it swapped with? And do um, they have to agree? 
that's the tricky bit. I think they would have to agree, wouldn't they? Yeah. But like, in an ideal world, they would. Yeah. If you have to be someone who wants my body. Yes. And that is got that immediately. That, that doesn't narrow it down. And made it well. Yeah. <laughs> immediately, immediately we've got we got him right down to slim pickings, haven't we? Uh, someone who would not mind, but but then would that mean that they are? It's really like I am my head, aren't I? Well, <laughs> oh, that's is, oh, that's yeah, such no, no. a Carl Pilkington thing to say. No, 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 no. I, I understand what head. you mean. I think what I'm giving you is I'm giving you the head. Yeah, but I'm allowing you to retain your own brain. I okay, think your brain is you. So the yeah, the brain so is you, me. So you you've now got um, Casey Affleck's head. Yeah, but you've got your brain. <laughs> that's a good you, example. You, you, you might make the cut actually. Yeah, he's yeah, good. Um, isn't he? nice, guy, yeah. nice looking man. I quite like him. Also, um, I think he might suit your body. I can because you yeah. don't want to you don't want to pop. I don't know. You don't want to pop the rock's head on your body. No, don't want to get a beefcake on it. No, I don't think so. I'm gonna topple. Um, I would topple very easily. Casey Affleck. Casey Affleck. Also a bit of a weed. Yeah, but not... I mean, I wouldn't say you were a weed. I just think you're a slim, slim gentleman. Well, you're very nice, kind. Nice, slim physique. Very kind, but, you know, imagine me in the dance chorus of Magic Mike. What do you think I'm doing now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly well, obviously, yeah. I think that's what you've been doing since mm -hmm. you walked through that door, mm -hmm. to be honest, Rick. Mm -hmm. Um... Probably what you've been doing all day is while you're running late, right? It's the anticipation. Just sitting at home, yeah, yeah. imagining me <laughs> yeah. in the Magic Mike chorus. Going, oh. Yeah, but weirdly with Casey Affleck's head. <laughs> yeah, with Casey Affleck's head going, this is. is it, can I get an answer from lovely. you? You can't just have. You can't just say Casey. Affleck. Can't just be Casey Affleck. Can't just yeah. be the first person you mm. uh, you brought up. Uh, Kermode, Kermode, Mark Kermode. That's nice. I quite like that. Yeah. Um, well, in that case, I'll take Mayo. Yeah, and we could. Uh, yeah, and we'll, and we'll, quite and we'll do a pilot for a uh, for a TV show. Yeah, that may or may not get picked up. Yeah, I don't think it would be. It would get picked up pretty quickly. It's uh, Rick Edwards and James Acaster with Simon Mayo and uh, Kermode's, Mark Kermode's he heads, heads, but their own brains. <laughs> and I guess what you'd have to do is then brackets, weirdly, yeah. close brackets. Yeah. <laughs> You've got to yeah. acknowledge that that's a strange situation. With their own brains. <laughs> it really is important that they know. Yeah, yeah. I guess got... maybe just a lot of asterisks. Yeah. So it's, it's Kermode and Mayo, yeah. asterisk, asterisk. Yeah. Obviously, they haven't got their, um, their bodies or their brains, brains. Um, those are being taken care of by Egg Astor and Edwards yeah never, as per never, never mind what's happened <laughs> to those uh, right great well let's, let's, let's dive into your uh, your iTunes let's okay. see what the first so do I, I, I press shuffle but I feel like I've, cheated. I've, I've seen what it is but let's I want to be surprised if you so. want to you can pass it over to me oh, yeah, I, so I, I can skip on to the next song we can start on that so Opera. you don't yeah, 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 even know nice. what it's going to be so here the we go the embarrassing thing will be when I, don't, I can't identify it well, there's a high chance of that. I think you'll be able to identify this okay. pretty easily. Go on then. Here we go. Oh, it's, Not loud it's, enough. it's literally skipped again. That's the, that's the thing. Here we go. Queens of the Stone Age. Oh, it's skipped again. Oh, uh, dear. You're, you're, right, oh, this is the most shambolic we've ever been. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Queens of the Stone Age there. Uh, on Rick Edwards' iPod. First It Giveth is the, is the song title. Um, Wouldn't have got that. You wouldn't have got um, that? No, From no. Songs for the Deaf? Songs for the Deaf. I would have, yeah, I know what album. album it's from, but uh, I, I'm genuinely, I'm happy. I think there's more um, humiliating stuff on there. Queen's um, of Stone Age, Queen's I, Stone I think, Age is, is a very solid. Absolute yeah. solid. No yeah. one's really going to go. One of my one of my favourite bands. They're very good. Yeah, they're amazing. Did I, you like Caius before them? Um, no. No. <laughs> no. 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 They're a different band. Yeah. Um, I, um, I, for a long time, had a quite a big uh, man crush on, on Josh and I'm never quite sure how you're supposed to say his name Hom, Hom or Hom Hommy I Hommy I think it's Hom Hom okay him uh, yeah <laughs> I just thought what a what a fantastic figure of a man yes um, and then I I did actually I enjoy um, what's the Eagles of Death Metal is that what they're called I don't they're know sort that of one. Off, offshoot bands right, that a yeah. couple of them were in also very very good stuff they're on there somewhere yep um, uh, yeah, so I, I, I sort of felt like, actually, do you know what? If I am swapping heads, back to swapping heads, yeah, I'll take Josh. On. <laughs> you would take Josh, yeah. wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think his head—I mean, he's bigger than me, but I think his I think head would it would, it suit would your body. sit all right. It would. Yeah. Sit, I mean, he's he's a real unit. Yeah, he's yeah. A real unit. I think it'd be okay. <laughs> Um, and you, you, you were saying to me, is that you, you, uh, you used to, you, a music, musician, you can play? I am, yes. Um, I um, 
Well, I had a band a long time ago. I, play, I played, uh, I was taught violin and piano at school, and I, mm. uh, I got to a certain level. I wasn't um, amazing, but I can still. I used, because um, when I was in my 20s, I did lots of acting jobs that were, uh, where, where they got cheap, you know, they would use actors who play instruments, and they got basically uh, <laughs> a cheaper rate musicians because right. M, MU rates are really, kind of, you know, sort yeah. of like. You know, uh, this, you know, hundred quid an hour or something like that. Or, and um, and uh, so I did lots of parts where I would go, "Yes, my lord." He went that way, and yeah. spent the rest of the play going on my violin. You know, <laughs> is that what happens in in Jupiter Ascending? Are you uh, <laughs> are you, are you playing a little? Uh, I don't know. No, playing a mandolin. No, no. Uh, um, uh, I do have a mandolin because the same strings as the violin. Um, oh, right, lovely, um, yeah. But uh, yeah, no, I've. Um, I've written a bit for, uh, I did a mate's film, which was a, a, a sort of a docudrama about yeah. werewolves, if this is <laughs> and I uh, did the score for that, which yeah. went on the Discovery Channel in America. Oh, great. And uh, I really enjoyed doing that, and I'd like to do it more, but, you know, yeah. um, I, uh, it's, it's, you know, when you've got, done, gone down one way... Too busy acting. You're too acting busy with, uh, acting. Yeah. Yeah. In uh, I mentioned Jupiter to ascending. Then that's out. When's that out? I think it. Came, I think it started yesterday. Actually, it started yesterday. Yeah. It's like, it, 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 was it fun? It was great. Uh, it looks like it would have been fun to film. Like you know, I've only seen the trailers. Yeah. But like, it looks like if you were making that, that would be a lot of fun. Like you know, it's a lot of action and costumes and. Uh, yes, uh, I. I the, the, well, I play a, you know a, a, an Earthling uh, <laughs> person, so um, I look a bit, you know, uh, right. cheesy, really. Okay. Um, like a, a cheesy Russian guy living in Chicago, um, but uh, interestingly enough. It does. I mean, I think it's fantastic. I mean, yeah. already the critics are being a bit crap about it. Right. But I think I think it's great. I think yeah. it's like one of those big, sprawling kind of mad 70s films that no yeah. people don't make anymore, you know. Yeah. And, and uh, if, if, I guess it's out at the same time as all the Oscar, Oscar bait films. So, like, you know, the critics are in ultra... Ultra critical mode, and they're, mode, and, they're, yeah. and, and they're definitely going to just like you know they'll be very snooty about anything. That's yeah, not, uh... I mean people are generally snooty about fantasy films. Right, it has okay. to be said they're, they're a little bit more cautious about slating off a kids' film. Yeah, but um, yeah, sci-fi usually gets uh, right, yeah. a, a, a bit of a, a bit of a kicking. But unfortunately, it looks like it hasn't. It, it might be a bit of a John Carpenter and uh, not right. do very well, but. I, I think it's I think it's great. I yeah. think it's great fun. It it was a bit um although it looks amazing when you when I you know occasionally walk around all the the massive studios that it was yeah. all being shot in and it was just all these uh, um amazingly shaped uh, sets that were just green. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. And, yeah, uh, yeah. They're all going to have stuff sort of CGI'd on top of them, I suppose. People on wires and stuff. Lots of wire stuff, yeah, yeah. And uh, did you, I mean, uh, were you in uh, scenes with, uh, with, with Channing Tatum and uh, I wasn't. Kunis? Well, I play Mila Kunis' uncle in it, so I had... Uh, I should have known that. <laughs> Just by looking at you, I should have known. <laughs> Can't see the Probably played Mila, Mila Kunis' uncle, I'd imagine. <laughs> Yeah, um, so I had a couple of scenes with with her. Yeah, I've heard she's very nice. That's what I've heard. She is. Yeah, she's um, good. Laugh, not, not, not that you would say otherwise if she wasn't on, on, on a radio <laughs> show. <laughs> no, she was. Um, uh, she was up for a bit of banter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. great fun. Um, cool. I, 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 is it? The Wachowski brothers, what, 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 Wachowski, Wachowski siblings now, because oh, uh, really? Larry has become La, uh, Larry has become Lana. Oh yes. Yeah. I forgot about. I completely forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. There's a very because um, uh, there isn't much footage of them. They were very private, and there is some footage of Larry with with like a baseball cap, yeah. speaking a little bit uh, sort of shyly, and um, and Lana has now got sort of um, like Camden Town dreadlocks. Yeah, and. Um, uh, it's, uh, they're both absolutely charming, lovely people. Yeah, I have to yeah, say. and a good laugh. You, you, you know, yeah. you can really have a good laugh with them. Yeah, a really approachable for you know American directors. There's no. Yeah, I I, I was talking to, talking to a friend who um, did uh, her sister worked on the wardrobe for uh, a not American director, but uh, for um, Mike Lee. Oh yeah, and uh, accidentally left. All the wardrobe 
for the day that she just bought in Tesco. <laughs> and uh, obviously it instantly... She got it back, but she said that the time in between... It was her first day working, and it was her first film she'd ever worked on. Doing, and she just of all the people... Oh, God, no. To, to just leave, no. <laughs> leave his wardrobe and everything. Not Mike Lee. No. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, she got it back and she was okay, but, like... Who I, I don't think she'd be working now if if, uh, if she'd <laughs> left happened, that there. Yeah, yeah, it's been awful, awful. awful. Uh, are you are you excited? I mean, uh, 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 actually, why isn't are you um are you excited about Baftas and Oscars or do uh, are actors more kind of like you know? It depends what's in uh, in play. It's you. Uh, awards across the board. It's like I never watch the Brits or anything like yeah, that. It's just yeah. it's always the. It's always the big sellers. It's the big movies. Or it's, mm. it's cynically the ones that have just been have just come out. Yes. And I, it's very rare that I think, oh, I'm so glad that yes. uh, or, uh, that got a, a nomination at least. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased that Boyhood oh, has, because yeah. I think that's so fantastic. And it's it, remarkable. It is. It's like um, it's it's unique. It's yeah. like a social document or something, as well as being yeah. a great film yeah I, I don't think i've ever felt that way watching a film because of your your because you are watching somebody genuinely you're watching all of them grow up and uh, go through changes and, and i love how you watch him the main character get worse as an actor and then better as well <laughs> like you, you, you see him become a teenager so be more self-conscious and yeah, not really grumpy. be very good at acting during that because yeah. you can tell he's a bit he feels a bit stupid doing it and then as he gets older, he gets good at it again. Yes. And yes, so yes. you feel like you're on a journey with the real life uh, person as well, uh, as well as the, the, the character in the film. Yeah, yeah I thought that was, a, that was really amazing. Yeah. yeah. And of course, it's so, something like that is so well put together so that, you know, it's not like uh, the technology has changed or that, you yeah. know, the, 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 uh, the, the lighting specs and all that kind of thing and the, and the, 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 the uh, colour design mm. all matches over a period of 12 years, you yes. know, um, which, which is the sort of stuff that you, you don't know unless you work yeah. in film. It's, it's, um, and um, it, it's, it's just incredible for that, really. And what's nice about that is what, what you're saying about, you know, you can get quite cynical with nominations. You know, that was released, what, April? Yeah, it was, and wasn't it? The yeah. first song, the, the whole thing opens with um, Yellow by Coldplay, is the first song in the film, which, you know, is the kind of thing that if that came up on this show on someone's life, well, they'd be embarrassed about. You know, like, <laughs> like, like, like you know, they're not trying to win anything with I that film. That. Yeah, you yeah. know, they're not trying to, not, at, at no point are they trying to win. They're just making the film they wanted to make. Absolutely, yeah. Which is, which is nice because obviously, you know, as much as I have really enjoyed Whiplash and Birdman and stuff like that, when, when they get released this time of year, you do go, oh, well, mm. see what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, I know. And, and, it, and it's crazy, isn't it? Because you go, are the people on, in the Academy really so, their memory is so bad? I know. There has to be stuff that's just been released. It's crazy. I it's, know. Um, it's, it's a sort of political thing. It's just not right, I don't think. No. Just to choose something from the last. Um, so, yeah, it is, a, it is yeah, unusual thing. and great yeah. that uh, Boyhood is, yeah. is, uh, is, is up there. Yeah. yeah. Of course, you know. We say nominations, uh, awards, and nominations are important. Downton Abbey has done pretty well, hasn't it? That's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, um, uh, if you don't mind, I've just skipped the Brian Eno song because we know, we know that it's going to come up. Right. Oh yes, it's not a surprise. On your yeah. iPod, so I thought we'd, we'd have a, a bit more of a, right. bit more of a surprise coming up next. Right. Okay. Rather than that, uh, but <clears throat> yeah, um, lower one band like that, and, and another band who like, uh, oh, I will, I will buy albums by bands because I like the idea. Even if it's the result isn't as good, so like that low album when it's all the whole thing slow. Yeah, I like owning that. And then there's a band called Prince Horn Dance School, who, who I, I really like. Um, but it's minimal. It's like really minimalist. It's just like drums, bass, guitar, but like it's no real chords in there. It's all just like rhythmical. Yeah, but very like repetitive and just minimal. And I really like them, but I could only listen to half an album at a time. Yeah. Even yeah. though I like all of their songs, but like I would have to just like listen to it in chunks. I couldn't, I probably couldn't go to a gig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's just too much of the same idea. Yeah. yeah. Which is very brave, isn't it? Because um, yes. uh, a lot of bands try and, they try and make sort of compilation albums yeah. themselves, don't they? So they do a little yes. bit of everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. Try to hone things like, you know, I don't know, like, 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 <laughs> Uh, like Wes Anderson, 
like to, 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 do, do the same thing over and over until you've got exactly what you want. Uh, just keep on going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did the same film again. What's your problem? Yeah, same colour scheme. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I did it. Yeah, bright yellows. And I love him, by the way. I yeah, do, yeah, do me love too. him. <laughs> but it's probably yeah, probably one of my favourites. But uh, yeah, um, what's interesting about him as well is that um, a lot of people I know who like him. Everyone's got a different favourite film. Absolutely. There's I was not, just going to ask you what your favourite was. Yeah. Everybody's got a... Well, see, but also, everyone's got one they just think, that's not as good as the rest of them. Don't like that one. They messed up there. And it's always different. Yeah. And it's always when we say... So my favourite is actually Darjeeling Limited. It's my favourite one. I really like that. I'd like to see that again, actually. I've got that, actually. But yeah, but there's the one... The first one... What's it called? Bottle uh, Rocket? Ah, oh, no, I haven't seen that. The one with the, the, the mountain... Rushmore. I really didn't like that at all. Mm. I just wanted to slap that kid <laughs> yeah, yeah. a lot. Yeah. Um, but, you know... Um, but then that's the thing. It's, you know, I know some people, Rushmore is their favourite. and then they, won't, they won't hear anything else. That's their favourite one. That's Absolutely. the best one. Yeah. yeah. Um, I saw uh, Graham Linehan uh, tweeted that he uh, didn't like Life Aquatic. And, uh, oh, and see, that's my favourite. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there you go. It's, it's, it's this thing. It's, it's the, it's the, like, oh, I love have. that film. Ones that are, oh, I think Life Aquatic. So yeah, brilliant. I'd probably say, I mean, Bottle Rocket. If you haven't seen that one, it does. It almost doesn't count because it's his first film. Right. Yeah. So yeah. it doesn't look like a Wes Anderson film. The sense of humour is the same. Yes. And. Um, but even the acting isn't as the acting's a bit more mainstream and stuff. It's a bit more, no, but it's very funny. It's a very yeah. funny film with the Wilson brothers as the main characters. Oh, it's the stuff. Wilson brothers in it, right? Yeah, yeah, they're, they're like the, the the leads in it, and, and it, it is a very funny film. And Owen Wilson was still writing films of him at that point. It was the, the first one, oh, right. so it's him and Owen Wilson wrote it. Um, but it just doesn't look the same as the rest of them. But like, yeah, like, I, I would say, even though I like it, Moonrise Kingdom might be my least like. Yeah. Bottle Rocket is my latest one it doesn't count but like you know I mean, Moonrise Kingdom is like, well, there's something about it that I don't connect to as much mm. whereas other people I know they love the fact that it's it's mainly about how like the kids have more emotion than the adults and, the, yeah. and, the, and, stuff and things like that so yeah. what a great guy oh he's a marvellous short. man <laughs> James Acaster on Fubar Radio my guest today is Paul Kassar, uh Hello, Paul. Um, hi there. How you doing? Good, thanks, mate. Bit flustered. Don't, yep. know, don't know where my mics are. So no. Well, I mean, we're sitting here, and there's about six of them around us. So um. it's very confusing. Yeah. Uh, also, like in my defence, that mic was where my mic usually is. Exactly. So he was lulled in there. So he but went straight for it, as you should. Still stupid, though, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> still pretty stupid. Have you ever, Paul, bought an album just because you liked the cover? And then put it on your iPod, and then it gets played in a radio show. <laughs> so uh, that's what just happened to me. No, but that was a good example of it. It's a great it's example. Got, it's got a music for serial killers. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I'd say so. I mean, I haven't got uh, a massive amount against that uh, song, really. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's the kind of song, definitely, that uh, when I started this show, I was like, well, I hope that Sunburned Hand of the Man album doesn't pop up at any point. Cause, well, uh, yeah. That was mainly because I like the name, really. Why, but, it I, is a I great like name. Sunburned Hand of the Man is a funny... Sunburned Hand of the Man. ...name for a band. Yeah. yeah. That's good. That's very cool. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I'll get that. And then uh, I remember getting it home and being like, oh, it's that. But I just put everything on my iPod. Mm. So for, I, at some point I might get into you, you it. You have to, you have to. Yeah, just be ruthless. Put everything on there and, yeah. <laughs> that was uh, that album was from... I bought that on what at the time was one of the best days of my life. Okay. I went to... Me and my girlfriend at the time went to London. Right. We had a very short-lived... Rela- we had this really, like, short window of a re- relationship that was, like, both convinced we were fully in love with each other, looking back, we were not, Paul. <laughs> right. But uh, but at, at the time, it was like, this is... Uh, and, and we, is we lived in happening. Northampton, kind of thing. So right. we, one day we were like, let's just go to London. Yeah. I just decided... I mean, just, I, I haven't really been to London before. Mm. And just the whole day, just going sightseeing. I remember just going to this record shop. It'd be like, I've got to buy an album to remember the day by. Sure, and it's sure. that. Wow. <laughs> Says it all, really. That is the album <laughs> that, if I wanted to remember that day in my life, I'd have to listen to that. Which wow. was a, 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 so we've just opened all those wounds there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's come up and gone. No, that's why the relationship didn't work. There's a that absolutely was an omen. That album. Insistence on playing that album over and over again. Yeah, just listen to it all the way home. It. All the way <laughs> home, listening to that album. <laughs> Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I, I believe that album's seven tracks of that as well. I, I was getting into it there, to be fair, though. It started, I, was, it, I was quite enjoying it, yeah. It the rhythm there. started kicking mm, yeah, at the end there. It did. I was starting to feel it. Feel it. It kind of reminded me of Iggy Pop. 
Yeah. So. Yeah. Iggy Pop puts a bit more effort in, I'd say. Uh, it depends what day you get. Yeah, sometimes, yeah. <laughs> to be honest, to be fair, I'm giving him a bit too much credit there. I, I saw him at the Isle of Wight a couple of years ago, um, and he was absolutely amazing, kind of staggered on, played this yeah. incredible set. And as he left the stage, like literally a minute later, he just ran back on, yeah. totally infused, and just screamed out, Fuck you! <laughs> and then just walked off. <laughs> It was amazing, the whole audience, just an absolute shock. It was like, where did that come from? Fuck yeah, well, fuck you. The fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Nick. One of the things I really love is people saying fuck you to, yeah. <laughs> to yeah. a group of people or anyone or just one person. Just really It's really funny. Yeah. Yeah, we obviously really upset him. The Hives, for a while, just, just used to end their sets. They just play the last chord and then all give the audience the finger. Brilliant. At the same time, but just with complete straight faces. Yeah. So they were just like, like, like robots. They play the last chord and then just swear at everyone. Genuinely meant. No, well. yeah, and that was the end <laughs> of the. Hate their audience. Do you ever feel like that with a when you're acting? Obviously, like I say, obviously, as if I know what I'm even talking about. It's but like, I don't. there's fourth wall and stuff up a bit more. Like with, with mm. comedians, if we're having a bad gig, we tend to make it even worse or better right. by stepping out of the gig and having a go at the audience. Sure. We can say what we like to it. If someone's talking. Uh, in, in the audience, we, we can just be like, "Mate, do you want to shut your you shut just up?" Just vent some spleen. <laughs> yeah, you can be really rude to them, and the customer's not always right, and it's yeah, fine. Yeah. And I've been to uh, a lot of plays where the people in the audience just doing the same behaviour that sure. I would hate at a comedy gig, yeah. and that I almost can't carry on doing stand up when someone's doing it. So I, I instantly go into them. But you guys can't do that. You're responsible for each other. I mean, yeah, you know. no, absolutely. Yeah, you just got to sort of grin and bear it, and um, just carry on. Yeah, you break out of character and the whole thing just kind of tumbles. So. Have you ever been tempted? Has there ever been like one where it's like you're on the verge? Um, yeah, a few times. Yeah, so other people sort of talking all the way through it. Yeah, because it's, uh, oh, yeah, it's so distracting. But, yeah. Um, yeah, you've just got to try and block it out. Kevin Spacey did that thing once, didn't he, when he was he did, in yeah. character? Yeah, and somebody was using their mobile phone. That's it. So I think, yeah. But then, but that's Kevin Spacey. You're, yeah, you're Spacey, aren't you? Yeah. You can do it if you're Spacey. Yeah, I reckon he'd just been waiting for the opportunity to do that. Yeah. And everyone just goes, yeah, because I, I, yeah. I, I did a gig once at the Ivy okay. that the Old Vic had put on. It was a fundraiser for the mm. Old Vic, I think. Sure. Uh, then they, they, they probably do need it. I, don't know, I was about to sarcastically say they need it, but then I was like, I don't have a clue. No. Um, but Alistair Campbell was doing a talk beforehand, okay. and then the comedy, and Spacey's in the audience, right. bloody loving it. <laughs> uh, obviously, Spacey left before the stand-up started, just left with Campbell. Off to get That's it, I'm done. My work here is done. Oh, yeah. But it was weird there was a whistleblower on first giving a talk about whistleblowing. Okay. So, and it was like very serious. And I'm kind of speaking out against the um, the the Blair government, actually, because that was when he was kind of chucked out. Sure. And screwed over quite a bit. Yeah. And there's loads of lies spread about him in the media. Yeah. So it kind of went on and went, the guy, basically, might as well have said the guy's about to come on right. is a liar. And I think he's a disgusting man. Right. And he ruined my life. Jeez. Yeah, it was kind of like really like, and then like Alistair Campbell went on. And it was really amazing how um, a room full of, it's mainly mainly actors, I think, but also just mm. people who went to the Ivy. Sure. So, yeah, mainly people who just were, you know, went to the Ivy anyway were the, were the members. Right. And just how quickly. They just lapped up Alistair Campbell and forgot. Well, cause I was, I was sitting there going, "Well, if that's true, yeah, I hope you address it." Sure. And he kind of didn't. He just went on and told a load of stories about him and Spacey hanging out, right. and everyone was like, "Love, loving it." It's so quite fickle then. Yeah, but really just being like celebrities. Yeah, yeah. They all went to. He, he said about him and Spacey walking into a McDonald's in Ipswich, right? And the guy behind the counter couldn't believe his eyes. And that was the end of the story. That was it. They didn't even tell you what they ordered. Not what they ordered. Not, not what happened. Fish man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, I, I imagine Spacey and Campbell say fillet of fish. Fillet. Of I know. Fillet Campbell of probably fish. still says fillet. Fillet. Fillet of fish. Yeah. Yeah. I think Campbell would still keep it as fillet, and feels about right. Spacey would say fillet. Fillet. Yeah. Fillet of fish. You can imagine if he was um, Usual Suspects, mm. that character would say fillet. That'd be amazing. Filet. And so would American Beauty, Kevin Spacey. I'm trying to think of a Kevin Spacey character that wouldn't say filet and that would say fillet. Fillet. Um, fillet. I've just been watching House of Cards. Just came back on, uh, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. Addicted? Friday. Uh, yeah, first two seasons. Yeah. I really, really got into it. It is really very good. It. But that, that would be filet. Yeah. Sure. That wouldn't be a fillet. He would say fillet. Oh, he'd be like, fillet. I like a filet. Fillet. Yeah, like, <laughs> turn to the camera. <laughs> Naturally, normally I'd get a filet. <laughs> Uh, Marcus Bentley, hello. 
Hi, Jim. My guest today, <laughs> which I'd normally say at the top, and I didn't today, uh, Marcus Bentley, uh, best known as uh, the voice of Big Brother. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to think now of a lot of... I'd like to make a playlist of uh, songs that are named after other musicians as well. Buddy Holly by Weezer, that would be yes. one that was on there. So uh, I think LCD Sound System did Daft Punk is playing at my house. That was a big one. Well, uh, yeah, I think you can make yeah. a whole a whole album based on that kind of stuff. You got me thinking. You just kind of, uh, yeah, it's quite hard, isn't it, when you start properly thinking about it. But um, I'm sure we could think of. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure we could think of more. But uh, yeah, that's that's, that's a nice, man. That's like, did you, are you a big Sopranos fan? Oh, I love the Sopranos. See, I've never seen it. Well, do you know what? Like quite a, a few lads have said that to me. That to me lately, I thought you got to what you got to watch it, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think all those references you miss in GMs, you know. What I mean? Yeah. Do you know what? That probably finished ten years ago, didn't it? Yeah, it would have finished yeah, a long time ago. Yeah. But uh, there's, there's so many. Uh, I mean, obviously, I mean, you know, who who's got time to watch all of the? Yeah, you got to uh, watch that's classic. The box though. sets, but that one is one of the you ones where to. you kind of think, yeah, I should. Mind you, it is pretty violent, and it's you know. I like, I like that kind of stuff. I like a bit of violence. You know. Well, yesterday I watched The Purge. Have you ever seen that? No. I don't know why I watched The Purge. I've got Netflix, and I'm going through it. There's so many options of things yeah. that I could watch, and I watched The Purge, which had been given one star. But I thought, <laughs> star. I thought, yeah, I've always heard of The Purge, and I think it's an interesting idea that it's in a future where uh, there's one night a year where. Everything's legal. You can do oh, whatever you right. like. All I saw that advertised on a bus stop last year. Yeah, and so uh, you're allowed to kill people if you want, and just what people would do. And I thought I watched that. It really depressed me. <laughs> it really, Did it deserve more than one star? Uh, yeah, maybe maybe two stars, okay. but um, I'll, I'll probably double the star rating. Yeah. Uh, but uh, from what I gather, like because there's been a lot of sequels. I think a lot of the sequels have, um, you know, with the Alien films, where like the first Alien film was actually almost like almost a play. It's amazing. Yeah. It's very good. Uh -huh. And uh, and then the second one is also very good. Yes. But it's just it's just them going, we'll take the Alien, yeah, and we'll just make it all about. Imagine if there was loads of them and just the action movie yeah. with that, and just just take the the core idea of imagine if there was an Alien, <laughs> and, and and we'll do that loads. Yeah. And I think like the Purge. They've kind of gone with the first one. They've gone like, right, you know, imagine this future, but here's the storyline I'm going to do. It's going to be about the family and and their how that they've got to like weigh up what they believe in and their morals and stuff and all this. And I think the sequels to the Purge have just gone. No, just imagine if everyone was allowed to kill each other, <laughs> and so they just do that for the sequels and stuff. So that yeah, sounds nasty. I watched the one where they're trying to do it a little bit, a little bit nicer. Yeah, but uh, it's still pretty. Old. I mean, even Hawks in it. That's that, that's the only thing that swung me. I was like, well, even Hawk wouldn't no. do something that's completely rubbish. You haven't saw it the GMs. No, no, yeah, no. I don't. Yeah. I don't think you should watch it. It's, it's, I mean, that's uh, that's the kind of violence that depresses me. Yeah. Well, I've started watching that Peaky Blinders. I'm always a little ah, bit yes. behind the times. Now we uh, we're on the f wife and I were watching the first series. We're about episode three. It's really, really good. I'm being told it's really, really good. I was reading about it today. That's on Netflix. I should just watch Picky Blinders. I started watching Bloodline today. I don't know why everyone's told me not to watch it, but I really like That's the two why. leads. Yeah, I, I love the I love the two you, lead you, actors. You, you're your own man. Do you know what? I am actually. I think that, that this show should be about me being my yeah. own man. Yeah. Put it out there. I watch what I like. I don't necessarily that like. Could the same be a title of your series, your Channel Four series. So my Channel Four series He's coming his own out. Man. He's his own man, and it's me doing stuff that the yeah. viewers hate. Yeah. <laughs> this is rubbish, yeah, but he's his own. I mean, you knew what you were getting. Yeah. He's his own man. He does what he likes. Absolutely. Would you, um. So, if you, I mean, I, I actually, I just. Before you did, uh, Big Brother, um, what's the. What did you do in my life? I what's was the an, history? I, well, I was an actor. I've been. You know, at drama school, yeah. I, I did uh, in in the nineties. I did loads of like, I, I, as an actor, yeah. I was in loads of commercials. Right, I, did, I remember doing about nine commercials, which yeah. appeared really well in, in the midnight. You know, when you sort yeah. of just out of drama school and like you do, you've done a bit of fr fringe theatre, then you yeah. do a bit of oh. Uh, bit of rep in those days i remember going yeah. you know and i was dead chuffed to be getting 150 pound a week which Love, is yeah yeah, great. yeah that was the equity equity minimum yeah and uh all of a sudden get nine commercials and think oh my god yeah oh, oh great and then uh, i did some re re and I, I turn up a casting yeah for 18 months i get every single one of them every yeah. one i went for yeah and then i start then i went and then, then, I, then i went for one yeah and i never got another commercial Ever again? Wow! So this eighteen, this, be, this, what, what do they call? There's a phrase for anybody. Yeah. These golden days, of yeah, eighteen yeah. months of like 
well, I've got another yeah. one, and then nothing until I did one last year right. with Peter Dixon, the guy uh -huh. off of the X Factor. Yeah. Lovely tonight. Yes, yeah, we, we, we had a great, we had a great laugh, and we did and was it based joint, on that yeah, kind of stuff? Me and him were sort of yeah. uh, going around doing these voiceovers for yeah. this. Anyway, it was for a big newspaper, and they were doing this reality TV list, and we were, you know, yeah. we did this joint commercial, and we had a great big yellow Hummer, and we were travelling around <laughs> in our uh, posh. Uh, dinner suits and what have you going to events and yeah. blah de blah anyway it was funny to see us out of context and together sure yeah yeah and so that but that was the first commercial i've done in what would be uh 18 years or something like that yeah so it was just you know i'd like to see a program where it's you and peter dixon uh just doing yeah. voiceovers yeah. of uh, various things so <laughs> literally peter uh, like a duel making a cup of coffee yeah tonight marcus oh that'd be great you two doing the voiceover of each other's lives yeah so uh like a, i'd make a documentary about you yeah. documentary on about this peter. channel four program of yours uh, yeah. your man we could do a little <laughs> sketch you know yeah but a little sketch insert i'd like know. to do that i'd yeah. like to make a documentary about either one of both of you and then have you do the voiceover we need for to pitch this one. don't we to one of the big channels yeah yeah, yeah well i i mean yeah. i'd watch that yeah, I'd watch it. I'd, I'd watch it too. Um, we well, when you auditioned for uh, Big Brother, was there a lot of people who just all sounded like you, or was no, it loads of different no, voices? No, no, no. I think what it was, they, uh, I, I'd started doing voiceovers in 1998, so two yeah. years before Big Brother started, and I. I was basically, as I said, I come to this hiatus where I was doing mm. nout. Yeah, I, do, I, I, would, I was doing a bit of theatre, a bit of this and that, but I, my work had dried up. Yeah, so right, I. Uh, I need a new agent, so I basically got contacts, the directory for agents and uh, the, the business. Yeah. And I went through the agents and I randomly, uh, did I even email? Was it email in those days? Probably was. Yeah. 1998, I can't quite. Yeah. Know. I wrote, I either wrote. Yes. I probably wrote. Yeah. And I said, look, uh, I'm looking for new representation. And yeah. the, this, the letter must have arrived on this desk. <laughs> and I'd accidentally wrote away to the biggest voiceover agency at the time in the country. Yeah. And they rang me up that day because it was 1998. And it yeah. was around the world. It was just before the World Cup. And Gaza, who never went to the World Cup in the end, yes. because of uh, some controversy, yeah. uh, they wanted to do, and that's whatever advert it was, they wanted uh, whoever to do an impersonation of Paul Gaskin. Now, right. they think, like a lot of people think that, you, you know, I don't know, they think that just because you're from the Northeast, you can do, that's yeah. just a general sort of, yes. sort of thing. Because I remember on a little side step when the great Bobby Robson yeah. got sacked from Newcastle United, whenever that was, yeah. the. The, one of the newspapers was saying, "Hey, what's he gonna do now? He, yeah. he could, he could do an and Dex job. He could be the yeah. voice of Big Brother." And well, how yeah, disrespectful yeah, yeah. of Bobby yeah. Robson, really? Yes, Just because yeah. he's from the northeast, yeah. any Geordie, jo any Geordie's job is his. Yeah. Disrespectful you know. to you as well. Yeah, let's well, face it. You know, I'd like to think. I'd like to think so. Bobby Robson could uh, step in. So anyway, shoes. going back to the, the, the that, so I did yeah. this advert for. Uh, I can't even remember what it was for. I think yeah. it was from a museum. Right. It was something like the Natural History Museum. I don't, it was. It, yeah, yeah. it was something like that in London. Being Paul Gascoigne, yeah. and it had a World Cup edge to it, sort of. Right. Thing, yeah. You know? Yeah. And then that was it. And I've never sort of looked. So when it came to sort of uh, uh, the producers of Big Brother looking for a voice to voice the show yeah. that nobody really heard of. There was, there was rumblings in the paper because it had been big in Holland and yeah. it just came from a yes. Dutch company. Yeah. Uh, Endemol yeah. is a Dutch company and it came from there. They'd done it to great success and so Channel 4 bought it and so they wanted a voice for it to narrate the show and they... Uh, so they just got every when all these big voiceovers. So I was with a big yeah. voiceover agent accidentally, and uh, they got all the tapes. They weren't even on CDs in those days. Right, like yeah, nowadays, yeah. it would all be just some sort of MP3 or whatever. Yeah, yeah, sent yeah, to yeah. Them. They listened to all these people. So they'd be famous people because yeah. on, on, on my agent's book there was a, a loads of famous people, uh, yeah. and they just listen to everybody. So I think the, should we we'll, we'll have a group of famous people, a group of and a group of regional types. Yeah, and I was in that sort of section. Mm -hmm. And and then I got I got this phone call and I just bought this uh, uh, which were a mini disc player uh, but you rec could record on it and yeah. uh, uh, my agent rang me up and said look you, you need we, a bit of script they're quite like you for this job would you just you know and th th you've been shortlisted would you do a bit of script yeah I thought so we drove to uh, one of the electrical store and we got this eight pound mic yeah and we stuck it in there whatever. 
I was say away because my wife drove, I remember, and uh, yeah. I, I, I uh, so I had to record this bit of script. And it's typical Big Brother fair. It was yeah. things like uh, Johnny's in the bathroom <laughs> doing something he wouldn't want his mother to know. Type, yeah, type yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. And then so and so's in the garden feeding the chickens. Yeah. And uh, apparently it was that line that got me the gig. <laughs> <laughs>